Well, hi everyone. It's Breeders' Cup week at Del Mar. For the first time in the 34 year history of the Breeders' Cup, we're here at the seaside resort town, Del Mar, California, and that is the subject of today's segment. We'll talk a little bit about the nuances of the Del Mar main track and the Del Mar turf course. The turf course at Del Mar was replaced in 2014. The synthetic surface former synthetic surface was replaced by dirt in 2015. So we'll talk a little bit about the nuances of the relatively new turf course and main track. But before we talk about those nuances, I want to recite a quote from trainer Bob Baffert. He's a terrific trainer. I'm not sure about his handicapping, but he said something very important early this week. He said having a good horse is more important than drawing well. Well, I agree with what tra trainer Bob Baffert said, and I would add this. The fundamentals of handicapping, class, condition, speed, and pace are a lot more important than drawing well or course profile. Having said that, those are considerations. Track profile, does speed carry, does speed not carry? Post positions, we know that's important as well, but they are not as important as the fundamentals of handicapping. So let's talk a little bit about the nuances of Del Mar. And we'll start off talking about the grass course. There will be three mile grass races run, Breeders' Cup races run this week. Two of them on Friday, the Juvenile Phillies Turf and the Juvenile Turf, and one on Saturday, the Breeders' Cup Mile. Let's first talk about the Juvenile Phillies Turf. This mile, this turf course at Del Mar is a fair, equitable turf course. In other words, Regardless of running style, the best horses can and do win. Now, this grass course is a real, genuine grass course. And what I mean by that is come from behinders, have a fair shot to win. In fact, one third of the turf mile winners during the summer meet at Del Mar were won by horses that were positioned in the back of the field with only a quarter mile to run. If you like rushing fall in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies turf on Friday, and I do, well, you don't have to worry about the turf course getting her beat. She is a blast home closer racing over a turf course that often rewards that particular style of running. As for the juvenile turf, well, once again, Europeans often hold the advantage in this particular race. In fact, eight of the 10 juvenile turfs in Breeders' Cup history were won by a horse that prepped outside the United States. There are a several shippers coming in for the juvenile turf, including Massar and including, who's the other one? James Garfield is the other one as I look at my notes. My point is this, this is a fair grass course and I wouldn't say it's similar to European grass courses, but the way the races unfold with an emphasis often on late speed is kind of mirrors the way grass races are run in Europe. I would think that the Europeans would have an advantage over some of the locally based horses, US based horses. Perhaps Snapper Sinclair is an exception. I like the way he won the Kentucky Downs stake race last time out, lightly raced Colt. Coming in off a two month freshening, he will get a forwardly placed trip and he has speed, he also can finish. As for post position, Look, nobody wants to draw the outside box. We know that, right? But it's not necessarily the kiss of death. Caraconte in 2014 won the Breeders' Cup mile from post 14 at Santa Anita. And if you go way back to 1993, the mighty lure won the Breeders' Cup mile breaking from post 12 in a 13 horse field. My point is this, just use common sense when it comes to handicapping post position. No, you don't wanna be outside, but it's not a deal breaker. As for the Breeders' Cup Mile, the race will be run on Saturday. It's race number nine. This race has to unfold at a hot pace. The reason is this. Here's the speed horses in the race. Midnight Storm on the inside. Number two, Heart to Heart. Mr. Rory has speed, so does Roly Poly. Heart to Heart's trainer, Brian Lynch, said something very interesting this week. He said, and I'm going to paraphrase, we're not going to stick around. In other words, they are going to allow Heart to Heart to rock and roll. He's going to be up there on the front end along with Midnight Storm, along with Roly Poly, perhaps Mr. Rory. The Breeders' Cup mile on Saturday has to unfold at a fast pace. And I'd be very surprised if any one of those front runners were still around at the wire. Not because of the closers friendly course profile, 
but because the pace of the race is against their style. The Breeders' Cup Mile sets up for somebody coming from behind. I expect the best horse will, in fact, win the Breeders' Cup Mile. All right, let's talk about the Dirt Mile. Dirt Mile on Friday. During the summer meet, and that's what we're going to base most of this conversation on, the most recent meet held here at Del Mar. As you probably know, the main track was slowed considerably. Del Mar made a concerted effort to slow the speed of the track in an effort to reduce the number of catastrophic injuries. I believe that that helped. I believe that that contributed to the reduction in those catastrophic injuries. Now, interestingly to me anyway, the slower the racetrack became, the more effective speed became. However, well, first let me recite a stat. 25% of all dirt miles were won by the pace setter, and two thirds of the dirt miles during summer were won by a horse that was positioned one, two, three. So most of the dirt miles during the summer meet were won by forwardly placed horses. Now here's the drawback or the, the hitch in that argument. If you look for speed horses, you might be looking in the wrong, wrong direction. And I, the reason I say that is because Horses that handled this slow, deep main track, they produced speed and they ran well. Horses that did not handle this slow, deep main track, they dropped out of it and they ran poorly. My point is this, horses that have speed do not necessarily have the advantage. Horses that like the racetrack definitely had the advantage and most of the time or much of the time those horses produced speed because they were able to get over this this main track. The slower the surface became in summer, the more effective speed became. Kind of a bizarre situation. Now, what does that mean with regards to the dirt mile? Sharp Azteca is the speed of the field with big numbers back east. If he handles the racetrack on Friday, he could be long gone. How about the morning line favorite, more spirit? He trained poorly all summer at Del Mar. He's a horse that, at least during summer, did not particularly care for this racetrack. He also was coming off an unbelievable performance in the Met Mile. So he might have been feeling the effects of that blowout win in the Met Mile when he's trained here this summer and referring to the morning line favorite, Moore Spirit. Who does like the track? Well, my top selection, Accelerate. He started four times at Del Mar, won three of them, and his only loss was a good fourth place finish. So if you're looking for a horse that has proven form over the Del Mar racetrack, you don't need to look any farther than Accelerate. We know he handles the track. He has a versatile running style. He can be forwardly placed and he can finish. All right, let's talk about a mile and one eighth on the main track. The Distaff, it's race number nine on Friday. Paradise Woods is the controlling speed in the field. However, Stellar Wind, the morning line favorite at five to two, also has speed. They learned something about Stellar Wind a year ago when she was facing Beholder several times. They knew that if they allowed Beholder to dictate the tempo of the race, she was going to be long gone. So Victor Espinoza and Stellar Wind's trainer, John Sadler, well, they concocted a strategy that put Stellar Wind into the race. Espinoza asked her for early run, she sat second often to Beholder and defeated her twice. I expect a similar strategy on Friday in the Breeders' Cup Distaff. Everyone knows that Paradise Woods is the speed of the field, but Stellar Wind will be forwardly placed as well. What do you do with Elate? She's training great here. East Coast Shipper who's training great, but I want to go back to what I said earlier. The handicapping fundamentals, condition, class, pace, and speed are far more important than any particular horse for course methodology. There are eight entrants in the Breeders' Cup Distaff. I think there are four principal contenders, those being Stellar Wind, Elate, Paradise Woods, and Forever Unbridled. But there might be a bomber in the field as well. Her name is Champagne Room. She trained magnificently all summer long as she prepared for her comeback. She hasn't started at Del Mar this year, but she trained super all summer over the main track and she has a forwardly placed running style that could allow her to get a great trip right behind Paradise Woods and Stellar Wind. Okay, let's talk about sprints. Race eight on Saturday is the Breeders' Cup Sprint and if the track plays like it played during the summer meet, well, forwardly placed horses might have the advantage. In fact, half of all six furlong races during the summer meet 
were won by horses that were within one length of the lead after the opening quarter mile. So if you showed speed during summer going six furlongs, chances are you had a head start on everybody else. What does that mean for this year's Breeders' Cup Sprint? Well, we know that Dre Fong is quick and so is Imperial Hint. I'm not sure what kind of trip that Dre Fong can work out from post number two, but we do know this. He should be forwardly placed. His only start here was a debacle. He lost the jockey at the break soon after the break and ran around the track. But Dre Fong is a legitimate favorite in the Breeders' Cup Sprint. The question is, what kind of trip can he get from post position number two? As for Imperial Hint, well, he's making his first start on the West Coast. He's fast, he's drawn outside, and he has a fighting chance up on the front end. As for the Philly Mare Sprint, that's also on Saturday. And there has been no bias regarding seven furlong races. There is a bias, however, with regards to age. It's kind of a curious statistic, and it could be an aberration, but year after year we see it time and time again, and that is this. Three-year-olds in the Breeders' Cup Philly and Mare Sprint have historically underachieved. I bring it up because the morning line favorite in the Philly Mare Sprint is Unique Bella, a three-year-old filly at odds of nine to five. There have been 29 three-year-olds contest the Breeders' Cup Philly and Mare Sprint. Six of them went favored, none of them have won. So three-year-old fillies 0 for 29 in the Breeders' Cup Philly Mare Sprint, including six beaten favorites. Only two finished second and four of others finished third. So if Unique Bella is potentially vulnerable due to her age and or inexperience, who can win it? Well, she drew well, Unique Bella did, did near the outside but so did Sky Diamonds. In fact, Sky Diamonds drawn in post 12 directly outside Unique Bella. And if that age situation gets Unique Bella beat, well, it could be Sky Diamonds, former claimer to get the money over a racetrack that was fair to all running styles at seven furlongs. All right, it's time to talk about some two-year-old racing. And there will be two of those races on Saturday, the Breeders' Cup Juvenile and the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies. Now, I mentioned the importance of horse for course, horses with established form over the Del Mar main track. The favorite in both two-year-old races, both of them won twice this summer at Del Mar. Bolt Doro broke his maiden first time out, came back and won the Del Mar Futurity, and the Philly Moonshine Memories, she won her day, career debut and came back two weeks later to virtually wire the field in the Del Mar debutante. Now here's the knock on both these horses. By the way, mile and 1 16th races at Del Mar. I'd like to say they play fair. I think that's the case, but I can't say for sure. And the reason is this. During the summer meet at Del Mar, only four races were run at a mile and 1 16th. Only one at a mile and a quarter and one at a mile and a half. So distance racing on the main track in California is kind of taking a pass, so to speak. So I think it plays fair. Here's what we know about Bolt Doro and Moonshine Memories. They like the track. They both have forwardly placed running styles. The question with regards to Bolt Doro, did he run too fast for his own good, winning the front runner in a landslide last time out? When a two-year-old earns a buyer speed figure of 100, they generally go only one direction after that, and it's not up. As for Moonshine Memories, I could be in the minority here, but I will be taking a stand against her understanding, acknowledging that I might be wrong. The reason I am taking a stand against Moonshine Memories, it's certainly not because of her Del Mar course record. She's two for two here, but I was not at all impressed from a visual perspective with her most recent win in the Chandelier Stakes at Santa Anita. I know the number came back good. I did not like what I saw. And if I'm wrong, well, at least I'm only wrong at a short price. Both Doro and Moonshine Memories, they both have established form over the Del Mar main track. Okay, the turf sprint on Saturday is race number number five and will include one of the shorter prices of the Breeders' Cup, I think. Her name is Lady Aurelia. Now, here's the thing about turf sprints at Del Mar. They are extremely chaotic. Since the new grass course went in in 2014, favorites have won only 24% of all turf sprints at Del Mar. It's a five furlong mad scramble Horses get into all kinds of trouble, and that 24% win rate is about 50% less than the historical average, anywhere between 34-35%. 
favorites do not deliver with the regularity one would expect on in turf sprints at Del Mar. And I think the reason is this, lots of horses, a short trip, a short distance. And if you get tr into trouble going five furlongs, there's not a whole lot of chance to recover from that trouble. Trouble in a five furlong race is far more significant than, a, than any trouble in say a mile or beyond. Route races, horses can overcome trouble, even sometimes in sprints, but going five furlongs, one misstep and you're shuffled right out the back door. Lady Aurelia did not draw particularly well. She has speed, but she's down toward the inside. If she gets shuffled back, see that it's not the first shuffle to get you. It's those subsequent shuffles after that. You get shuffled once, you get shuffled twice, and then you're out the back door. So I would be very reluctant to take a short price on Lady Aurelia over this five furlong grass course. One other thing, they're only going five furlongs, but deep closers actually do, do very, very well. There were five turf sprints this summer run with the rails down. No temporary rails were up. Four of those five races were won by horses that rallied from the back of the pack. If you like a closer in the Breeders' Cup turf sprint, once again, it won't be the grass course that gets you beat. Okay, the two biggest grass races on Saturday are race number 11, the Breeders' Cup Turf, and race number seven, Phillies and Mar Philly Mare Turf. I mentioned earlier, I think this grass course is fair, and when you're going a mile and a half in the Breeders' Cup Turf or a mile and one-eighth in the Philly Mare Turf, I doubt that post position and or running style will get you beat. If it does, it's beyond my comprehension. As for the Classic, it's the big one of the day, big one of the weekend. We know that Collected loves the Del Mar racetrack. He won the uh, Pacific Classic, biggest race in summer. That's the race he won, by golly. Arrogate did not handle the main track during summer. He did not train all that well during the summer meet. He improved in his second start. And what can you blame it on? Can you blame it on him not liking the racetrack? Or was he still feeling the effects of the Dubai World Cup? I think he may have still been feeling the effects of the Dubai World Cup. I expect to see an improved effort on Saturday from Arrogate, but is it going to be good enough to defeat Gunrunner again? Well, we'll find out. It's the first Breeders' Cup at Del Mar, and with the possible exception of the turf sprint, well, I think handicappers can expect the best horses to win most of the races. Can you find them? You bet you can. Right in the pages of Daily Racing Form, I'm Brad Free at Del Mar for Breeders' Cup 2017.